Race number five at Belmont on Saturday will jump at 3.20. It's the Ashforth Office Furniture Handicap over 1,400 metres. It's another graduation race, a 62 plus. The replay horse. Look at the Pinjarra Park win of Kiora Star. Searching for runs towards the rail pike. In the straight though, Toe Rope had kicked away by two on Food Trouble and Go Crying. Now the run's coming down on the inside for Kiora Star. And Pike shot it through quickly, reefed it around the heels of the leader. Food Trouble battles. King of Judah keeps coming, but Kiora Star bounds away from them under the vigour of the wizard. Much too good, Kiora Star. Kiora Star made a winning return in the replay race. That was over 1,400 metres at Pinjarra Park when not for the first time he appreciated racing on what was rain affected ground. This is a full relation to Kiora Kutu. They did try him over a reasonable trip last preparation but uh, he goes into the second up over the same trip as last start 1400 metres. He's got really good wet track form. I think he might be the one to beat here for Michael Lane and Jordan Turner. I think the main danger is number nine, Jennibel, in really good form. This horse has won three in a row, uh, two at Belmont and one at Kalgoorlie. Sean O'Donnell has got this happy knack of getting on horses and winning on them first time. He stays aboard. He's one from one, trying to make it two from two. Number one, Geiger Gem has placed three, uh, placed three times uh, since winning late in May. He's had three consecutive second place finishings. Uh, Jason Whiting rides that horse. And then number three, Midnight Sky. Very well related, this relation to, uh, to Neverland and demonetization. I just don't think she's anywhere near as good as her famous siblings. My top selection in race number five, gonna go with number five, Kiora Star, to beat nine Jenna Bell, one Geiger Gem, and three Midnight Sky. Race number six at Belmont on Saturday they will jump at 3.55. It's the Tab Touch Handicap over 1,600 metres. It's a 72 plus affair. The replay horse, let's have a look at the last start win, impressive as it was, of Abdicator. Grey Digma's further back on the field with Astronomite. Greco led when they'd balanced up from one short. Abdicator down on the inside. It's the one coming through. Abdicator spears up on the rails at the 200. Goes to the front now from Greco. One short battling away. Don't like touch of silver. Mrs Brown's boy battling on. But it's all Abdicator. Abdicator comes away under the vigour of Pike. It gives Pike a double. There was a fair degree of confidence confidence in the abdicator camp seven days ago. Barrier one, William Pike, 1400 metres, soft track, won by almost two lengths. It was a very, very good performance. It's a similar equation for the horse on Saturday. Barrier one, William Pike, likely soft track. The difference being it will be 1600 metres, but this horse has uh, shown that it will probably get the mile and win over the mile. I think the major query is going to be the quick backup, the seven days, but if he handles it, he's going to be really hard to beat. I think the dangers might be number eight, Tonka Tough. Goes really well for Ryan the Boy Hill. It's only won six races, Tonka Tough, and Ryan's been aboard for five of them. Drops in grade and gets up to probably around his best trip, 1600 metres. Friar Esky's number five, draws a good gate, has been competitive from wide alleys this preparation. Always respect to Vaughan Sigley's horse here from barrier number two with Glenn Smith aboard. And then number one, Astronomite. It's got six lengths to make up on Abdicator and certainly cannot go on top here. But I'm expecting a little bit of improvement. Gets a claim for Brody Kirby as well, down to 56 kilos. I think it'll be there or thereabouts. My well, top selection in race number six, I'm going to go with number two, Abdicator, to beat eight Tonka Tough, five Friar Esque, and one Astronomite. Race number seven at Belmont on Saturday will jump at 4.30. It's the budget car and truck rental handicap over 1,300 metres. It's a 78 plus affair. The replay horse can look at the last start win of telling we're coming. A run coming almost on the fence for Mrs. Brown's boy, although got chopped out, then had to steady off the heels of See Me Sizzle, and they're followed by Friar Esk and Gunner Go. Back on the inside, tell him we're coming, trying to weave his way up on the rail. Military ruler had hit the front, though. Battling back, See Me Sizzle. Mrs. Brown's boy, look at tell him we're coming. He's threading the eye of the needle. Another piece of pike perfection in the last. Tell him we're coming. Tell him we're coming. He's absolutely flying at the moment. Has won six of his ten starts, including his last three. William Pike has got a perfect six from six record aboard this horse. Look, he's the worthy favourite for this race and he's very hard to tip against. I just think he might not be the greatest of betting propositions given the price he's likely to come up and the fact that he's back in trip and up in grade. Back in trip significantly as well from 1600 to 1300. He's yet to run a fantastic overall speed rating but he has been finishing off outstandingly well. Goes on top with with a few caveats from a betting perspective. I think the dangers might be number six, flying time should be on speed 
under Taylor claim, carrying that light weight of 53 and a half kilos. Number three, our finest moment is another likely improver, second up, albeit down in trip from 1400 to 1300. And number 10, by decree, if the Evans do open, she is an absolute muddler. She won on a wet track last time out. My well, top selection in race number seven, I'm gonna go with number four, tell them we're coming to beat six flying time, three our finest moment, and 10 by decree. Race number eight at Belmont on Saturday will jump at 5.05. It's the Prettel and Williams Master Painters Handicap over 1,300 metres. It's a 66 plus affair. The replay horse can look at minus looks, finishing second last start. They balanced up 350 from home. 4C nursed in front by Decree. Now lays down the gauntlet to it. A length and a half to Pinson running on. On the fence to Ruby Amiss and Bonnie B. Good. It's by Decree with 150 to go holding Pinson. Minus look starts to run on, but by Decree finds and finds plenty. It's by Decree coming away from them. Too strong by Decree. Minus looks gets a chance to break his long drought. It's been 427 days since he last won a race. He gets a midfield gate and uh, after placing second last start in what I thought was a decent performance in a similar race I think he can go close here for Steve Wolf and Glenn Smith very very tough race to end the day number two Pinson is racing really well in spite of having concussion plates on his front hooves has to go in the numbers number 10 resistance should get a nice run seeking her third victory in recent times and number one Helms gate drops in great after attempting to make all four weeks back. There's others you can consider here, number 12, Bold Success, and right down the bottom, 14, Kiss the Breeze, the two-year-old filly going around against the older horses. Tough, tough race. I'm gonna go with number six in the final race. It's Minus Looks to beat two, Pin Sun, 10, Resistance, and one, Helms Gate. It's now time to nominate my best bets on the Belmont card. Gonna go in race number three, number seven, Electric Light, to make it three wins from four starts. And later in race number five, number five, Kiora Star to go back to back. It's easy to stay up to date with everything that's happening at Perth Racing. You can log onto our website or you can follow us on one of our social media channels. Until next time, bye for now.